Hi everyone, today I want to show you the process of building homemade electric screwdriver with 3D printed case. Screwdriver is powered by the lithium ion battery and can be charged directly with a USB C cable. Adapter for the bits is also 3D printed, but of course you can always use any other that will fit the, with the engine shaft. In the video, we will go through all the phases of the project, from parts showcase, schematic, and case overview, straight to the working example at the end. I will also present where you can download all the files and make this project by yourself. Let's get started! So these are all the components that we need for our project. First of all, the lithium-ion battery that outputs standard 3.7 volts. Next one is the engine, and I will be using N20 engine, which has some nice working parameters. It can work with 3 to 9 volts and outputs about 0.2 Nm of torque. Of course, when powering up with maximum voltage, and in our case, the torque will be a little bit smaller because step-up converter that we'll be using outputs 5 volts, but it is still enough for this purpose. The third component is the motor driver, the DRV8833, that will allow us to control direction of the motor. We could also use very popular, popular L293D, but it has massive voltage drop, which is, is something we want to eliminate when building battery power device. It should be efficient in power delivery. So I will stick to DRV, but of course you can use any other motor driver with small voltage drop. We also need two push buttons to change motor direction, and two resistors, for example 10k ohm, that will act as a pull down for the buttons. And our last component, or actually two components in one, are the lithium-ion battery charger combined with step-up converter, which will allow to obtain higher input voltage for the motor. Ok, so now we are in Fusion 360, and I will show you the case, the design of all the parts, and also the design of the bit adapter, and how you can adjust it by yourself, to fit your bit size. Ok, so here is the main part uh, of the case, and as you can see, here are also small cuts for uh, for the other part to, to snap fit together. And we can see also the holes for the buttons, for, uh, for the engine, and for the wires connected to the engine. Now we can display the other parts. Here is the parts for the electronics and the covers. So the bottom one also with snap fit joint, little cut in here, hole for the bits and shaft. And the last one is the top one. Ok, so here we have the design for the bit adapter. And as you can see, one side is the hole for the bit, and the other side hole for the motor shaft. And if you open this file in Fusion 360, you can go to Modify and Change Parameters. Here are the parameters for those two holes. So shaft radius is this part, and half bit width is <coughs> this side. Uh, actually, it's distance from the center to this flat wall in here. Uh, I can show you this on the sketch. Ok, so as you can see, that's it. In the parameters, and we can change those to see how the model changes. And here we can make it smaller, one millimeter. And for example, we can make the shaft bigger, like that. It works fine. So you need to adjust it by yourself to to your component sizes, to your resolution of the printer. Uh, print a couple of times, it takes about 10 to 15 minutes, so you need to just try it by yourself and check what works for you. Here we have all the 3D printed parts along with the component that will be fitting in, and I will show you how to assemble the case and where we'll be placing the elements inside of the case. So, first we have the main body of the case where we put the push buttons in here, here the battery, and here the engine. So now we can pull the engine inside, close the case, it is all snap fit, so you don't need any glue for that. Then we can put the battery 
like that and put it down. Now we have the part that will fit our charger and the motor driver. So here is the charger and we probably want to connect those like this on some stiff element or we can use some electrical tape and connect like that. Of course we need some some cables to solder then but that should work well. And well let's say that these are connected together. Here we have a little something on the wall to be able to fit this charger like that. And of course for that we can use or glue or for example I will be using electrical tape. Um, but it's your choice, there is no problem to, to fit it inside because it's already quite quite well fitted, but you need to make it a little bit stiffer. Now we can close the case. Like that. Here we have the hole for the USB charging cable. And now we can fit those together. Like that. The only thing left is the adapter. Okay, and the push buttons. Of course, they will they will be um, connected to the resistor and the cables, so it will fit nicely. Then, for now, it's quite loose. But here you can see the whole case is snap fit. You do not do not need any glue for that, any other any other tools, and it fits quite well. Now we can go to the wiring i will show you the schema and then we'll assemble everything connected already and test it okay so here we have the schematic of our project and i've created it using a fritzing software so you can see the visual representation of the components in the circuit rather than just simple electronic schematic and first of all we have the battery which is connected to the input of the charger and the charger outputs 5 volts which we then connect to the power pins of motor driver. The most important thing is how we connect buttons to the input of the motor driver. Because those two inputs work the following way. If both are low level, the motor is not rotating. And when the first one is high level and the second one is low level, then the motor is rotating in the one direction. And when we reverse this connection, so the second one is high level and the first one is low level, then the motor is rotating in the other direction. So now let's think how those push buttons are actually connected to the input of the motor driver. And let's start with the first one. Here we have the straight connection from the input to the resistor and to the ground, right? So when we do not press the push button, there is a logical zero in here because the input is connected to the ground. But what happened when we press the button? Well, we close this connection between one side and the second side of the push button. And now we have the situation that this goes here and to the red wire and straight to the 5 volts. And now we have logical 1 here because the current takes the easier way, let's say, and we have the resistor in here, so it won't go here. It just goes through the red wire because there is no resistance in there. And that way we have logical one in the first input and the motor is spinning one way. And the same situation is in, with the second push button. So when there is no input, we go straight through the resistor to the ground. And when we close the connection by pushing the button, we have two connections to the ground and to the 5 volts. But because the red wire is with less resistance, we go to the 5 volts and we have 1 in the second input. And that's it. The only thing left was to assemble the device. You need to solder all components according to the schematic. Be careful not to create a short circuit. You should probably use some electrical tape to secure soldered connection between wires. One thing I wanted to show in the process of assembly is how you can connect two resistors to save some space. It is enough to connect them to input 1 and 2 of the motor driver, merge the tips together and solder it to the ground.
as you can see in here. Now we can go to the presentation of the working device. This is how our project presents itself after the assembly. As you can see, all parts fit together, it is quite compact in size, and the engine has enough torque to be used for unscrewing basic electronic equipment. 3D printed adapter can be simply adjusted to different bit sizes, so we can use it either for smaller or bigger screws. And that's actually all for today. Thank you for watching, if you have any questions please leave a comment below and see you in the next video.